So closures, a very difficult concept for most beginners and experienced programmers to understand. And that's because, in my opinion, people don't really teach closures the way that it should be taught. They tend to overcomplicate something that's actually quite simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain it to you in a very easy to understand manner. And I'll pretty much guarantee you that by the end of this video, you'll understand what closures are. And if by the end of this video, you don't know what a closure is, feel free to just destroy the dislike button. But let's just get right into it. Closures. So let's imagine we have a function, and this function is simulating the behavior of issuing an amount to and activating a gift card. So when we call this activate gift card function, we're going to top up the gift card with an initial amount of $100. And in this function, we're also creating the function to actually use the gift card. And that function is going to take in the amount that the user of the gift card wants to use, aka the debit amount, and it's going to use it. So it will subtract that amount from the total amount held by this gift card. And remember, we're not invoking or calling this function, we're just creating it and we're giving it a name. And we're naming it debit func which is going to be what we return to the caller of the activate gift card function. So now let's imagine that we want to activate two gift cards. Now remember, when we activate a gift card, what gets returned from the activate gift card function is the function to actually use the gift card that we're activating. So since we're receiving the function to use the gift card at the time that we call activate gift card, the variable name that we give the return value should be a verb, right? Like something like use gift card because we're assigning the function to use the gift card as a value to this variable. So let's do that for two gift cards. So now we have two functions here and we can actually call these functions. So to use the first gift card, we can call use gift card one and pass in the amount that we want to use. And to use the second gift card, we can call use gift card two and pass in the amount that we want to use. Now the debit func function will return the remaining amount after it subtracts the used amount. So we can just print the results of the call to these functions to see the remaining amount of each gift card. Now here's where things start to get tricky, but don't worry, it's actually super easy to understand. So you might be wondering, how is this debit func function accessing this amount? Like you would expect that once this activate gift card function returns and finishes, this variable amount, which is part of this activate gift card function scope, would be erased from memory, right? So how does debit func still have an amount to even reference or subtract from? Well, the answer to that, my friends, is closures. So the first time this function gets called, we're setting an initial amount of $100 and then we create the debit func that can later be used to actually use the gift card and subtract from that initial amount. Now, since this debit func function depends on a variable outside of itself, under the hood, the programming language will enclose both the debit func function and any variables that it depends on that are defined outside of itself and store it in memory as an enclosed unit or closure. So what's being referenced in memory by this use gift card one variable is actually something that looks like this. And for use gift card two, we're once again calling activate gift card a second time. And when we call it the second time, another separate closure will get stored in memory and referenced by use gift card two. So when we call both of these use gift card functions, they're actually subtracting from their own amounts that are contained within their own individual closures in memory. 